Hi, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'm going to give you a shop tour of the shop that I work out of. Now, people have been asking me for a long time to see more details of the shop and the tools I work from to create these YouTube videos. And it, I've dragged my feet on it mainly because I've always wanted to present to you a clean shop. But what I've realized over the past couple of years is this shop's never going to be clean. Every time I finish a project, I move another one in. I'm extremely busy here. So I figured today is the, is the best day to do it. It's clean enough, and I'll kind of show you what the state of everything is in real time. Now, a quick shout out to my subscribers. As of filming, we now have about 14,000 subscribers to this YouTube channel. So thank you so much for subscribing and watching all the different tractor restoration projects that I do here. Uh, if you don't own one of these old tractors or these old small engines, but you still want to support the channel, please uh, come to our website, isavetractors.com. We sell these awesome iSave Tractor hats, as well as these 100% weatherproof stickers right here. Now these stickers are awesome. They won't fade in the sun. They won't crinkle through the rain. You can slap them on your tractors, on your trucks, your toolboxes, wherever, and show your love for iSave tractors. So definitely check out these two items. If you do have these tractors and these engines, please support this channel and our business simply by doing business with us. We are the premier developers of aftermarket parts for the old Kohler engines, the old Tecumseh, Wisconsin, Briggs & Stratton, all the old cast iron I iron engines of yesteryear that's where we focus our business on so please uh, check us out if you need any parts and as, as well please always watch these videos give it a thumbs up subscribe hit that bell icon look us up on Facebook Instagram we're everywhere and we're growing by leaps and bounds every day so please jump on board and help save the tractors <laughs> So here is a broad look at my personal shop. This is where I make all of the YouTube videos that you see on this channel. So our business, isavetractors.com, is broken up into three different locations. We have an office and design space, we have a warehouse space, and we have my personal shop here. So this is where I do most of the dirty work and of course all the restorations for the YouTube channel. The shop's not very big. It's only 24 by 36 and this building is probably 50 years old. Directly on the other side of those walls are uh, two horse stalls and hay storage for our eight acre farm property here. So the real message to this shop is as you can see it is nothing fancy. It's not big I don't have any super expensive tools. Everything is very simple and basic and well within reach of our average customer. And part of the reason I work out of this shop is I could easily upgrade the shop to two to three times bigger and have all kinds of fancy tools, but I don't. I do it by design because I firmly believe you do not need a lot of things to be in this hobby of restoring old small engines and old small tractors. So I try to live that same ideology in my mind and in the shop here every single day. So keep it simple, keep it affordable, and keep it working. That's my motto. So now I'm standing in the center of my shop. Now the center of my shop normally doesn't have stuff like this on the floor. This is all left over from some of the projects that I've been working on this week. Uh, I'm parting out a bunch of uh, non-restorable engine parts in this pile and I have a couple of engines over there that I need to take a look through. But typically this floor space is empty except for when I have tractor projects in here. Now I'm standing in the center so you can see the layout of the outer walls. I have all of my tool storage, all of my workbenches along the walls, that way I can keep the center floor open for the large machines. This set of workbenches over here is where I'm working out of mostly. This is where I actually use the bench tops 
to take apart small pieces. And I keep all of my hand tools out in the open so I can visually see everything. So I like to hang hand tools on the wall via magnets. And everything that's too heavy to hang on the walls, I put on shelves with these little plastic dividers in between them. That way, at any glance, I can see if anybody has taken one of my tools. And nobody does. I've trained my kids well, and I have signs like this. I am very particular over where my tools are. It might not look at it at first glance. It looks like chaos. But in my mind, it's all organized, and I can instantly tell when something's not supposed to be there. Or if something's supposed to be there, and it's not there. So here's one tabletop bench. I've been working on uh, some mechanical fuel pumps lately. These are just some uh, parts that I've pulled off of various engines uh, over the past week. More tools and smart parts, small parts on this bench here along the wall. I have a lot of these filing cabinets around the shop. These filing cabinets are great. They're heavy duty. You can put a lot of stuff in them. And I've got every single one of them for free on the side of the road. People, they just want to get rid of stuff. And if it's free, you know, there's uh, you should take it. These filing cabinets are great. This sat out on the side of the road for I don't know how long. I went and grabbed it. It uh, rolls nice and smoothly. It easily holds all of my battery-powered tools, my impacts, my drills, my angle grinders, some impact sockets. This top one is full of just a bunch of clamps. And then the outside, you can put all kinds of magnetized tools on them. I have all these welding clamps right here. They're great. Filing cabinets, especially free filing cabinets, make great tool storage. This is my welder. This is uh, my most recent welder. I've had it for maybe half a year now. It's this Clutch uh, Multiprocess 220 welder. It has a 220 amp output power. It's uh, It can run on 120 volt or 240 volt operation. It runs multi-processes, so it runs uh, MIG, uh, MIG, TIG, stick, all of those processes. I personally use it with uh, MIG welding, but with uh, flux core wire. I got started welding with flux core, and I just stuck with it. I love it. As you see, I don't have tons of room in here, so I don't have room or a close enough location to constantly get uh, shielding gas. And I can weld a lot hotter with flux core. So I weld with the biggest flux core wire I can get, which is 35 thou thickness uh, flux core wire. I use it, I weld up to half an inch steel uh, without blinking an eye with this machine. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions on the internet that in order to build cool stuff, you have to have the most expensive name brand welder possible. And that's just not true. You can do a lot with. Uh, Simple tools like this, a little bit of knowledge and a lot of practice, you can handle it fine. So that's my welder. I have these folding welding tables, some extension cords, some welding helmets. This shelving system over here, when I'm restoring a tractor, I normally empty this out and put all the sheet metal from the tractor on there so I can keep it nice and organized as I go through the project. I haven't done a tractor since the John Deere 400 featured on this channel, so I've kind of put some other stuff in there for the time being. But I'm getting ready to do another tractor restoration project for this channel, so that thing will be emptied out soon. That's my 20-ton hydraulic shop press. That is a must-have tool if you're going to work on tractors and old equipment. I use it for everything, from pushing bearings in and out, of course, to straightening metal, to, uh, you know, the list goes on. I can't even think of it right now. I have a lot of shelf storage on the top along the wall up there. More shelf storage down there. More filing cabinets. This is my 9x20 bench lathe. You know, I don't use this lathe a ton. I use it primarily just for center drilling down round stock. I have to do that a lot. It's kind of set up for that right now. So I can just chuck a drill in the tail stock and drill directly into the center of a round piece of tube. I do that a lot. I also use it to turn down final diameters for uh, pins and bushings for things like the front end loader, the half track, the backhoe build that I did. It doesn't get used a ton. I won this at a public auction 
I only paid a few hundred bucks for it, so it's already paid for itself in the few tasks I've done with it. Uh, I have a little hobby too. I build uh, pens out of metal with my kids, so we make a lot of metal pens on that. A lot of my uh, tooling can be found directly above the lathe and directly below the lathe in the storage down there. I also have a magnetic tool holder right here and I love having tools attached to magnets that way I can grab one of these wrenches adjust something on the lathe and then I just stick it right back there same thing with my calipers when I'm finished I just stick it there it's always within view I always know it's there love it coming over to this bench this bench uh, I'm preparing just to install tools onto so I haven't gotten I haven't finished it 100% yet, so I have this bench grinder that I want to permanently install to the top of this. I have some other tools. This is a Drill Doctor uh, bit sharpener. Awesome. Really like that. Uh, this is called, uh, I forget what this is called. It's a, it's a wheel bearing packing tool. I haven't used it yet, but I'm looking forward to using it. Got some other parts. Oh, this is a muffler for the Simplicity Power Max I have outside. That's going to be my next tractor project, so I was just uh, collecting parts for that. This is a metal bender that I have uh, bolted to the bench. I use this to make all the tracks in the John Deere 317 half-track video. Excellent, excellent tool. I have this bench-mounted drill press. I have it currently set up to cross-drill round stock. I have this uh, movable vise here, this dial caliper set up or this um, dial indicator set up. That way I can find the exact center of round stock, drill and tap it for grease fittings and stuff like that. So I have that permanently set up and it's uh, very helpful for that. Bunch of drill bits. Oh, this is the first welder that I had. This is a, a 140 amp wire, MIG wire welder from Clutch. I use that entire welder right there to build the Cub Cadet 149 tractor loader video. That welder only cost me like $350. I was able to weld that entire project with that. I've put since I've put almost a hundred hours on that backhoe machine. Never broke a weld. That welder does the trick if you know what you're doing. Down here is a, a metal cutting bandsaw. I've only used that a few times, but I love it. It is the best way to cut straight cuts in steel. This is my floor drill press. This gets a lot of use. I use this for everything. Primarily drilling holes, of course. You'll notice on the top of all my drill presses, I have these magnetic trays. And I just love magnets. If I ever have to pull something off, I can just quickly toss it on this tray. The magnet holds it. I don't have to worry about it rolling away. It's great. Uh, also, on the side of all my drill bits, I have magnets installed to the side. That way, I can hold the chuck key. Get this in focused. So if I ever have to change the bit, I change the bit and I instantly just take the chuck key and magnetize it right there so I don't lose it. I do that on both my drill presses. So that's a little shop tip for you guys. That's what I like to do. I also do the same thing uh, with my brushes that I use to clear off uh, chips. I have this magnetic hook just magnetized to the side of this so after I clean up whatever I'm doing, I can just hook this back on, voila. On the other side of, uh, here's another filing cabinet. I keep a whole bunch of stuff in. I have everything from specialty engine tools to uh, spray cans for paint to solvents to grinding discs, everything in this one big free steel filing cabinet. Hardware storage, I go through a lot of hardware throughout my day here, so I buy it all in bulk. I have nuts, bolts, washers, everything, all down there. Zip ties. And then here are two other workbenches that I have over here. The tops are used for various projects. I'm getting ready to do that Simplicity Power Max, so I have a lot of parts for that up there. I have some items that some sponsors sent us. I'll be doing a video featuring this stuff uh, shortly. There you have it. There's my uh, personal shop tour video. This is where all of the YouTube projects that I display here happen. 
I hope I answered all of your questions. This is the first time I've made a shop tour video, so I'm not 100% sure what you guys are looking for. Uh, hopefully the main message uh, carried through though, and that's you do not need a big elaborate setup to work on and restore these old small tractors. You just need a small shop. You don't need a ton of fancy tools. Most importantly, you just need the will to do it and a little help along the way. And that's where isavetractors.com comes into play. Please, if you need any parts for your old vintage small engines and small tractors, check us out online, isavetractors.com. We are the leading developers and aftermarket parts for all the old Kohler K-Series engines, Tecumseh, Wisconsin, Onan, and the list goes on and on. Our business has blown up in popularity over the last several years, and with that popularity, we're taking those resources and we're just putting it back into the business, back into making our parts bigger, better, more widespread to cover all the different brands, makes, and models from the 1950s all the way up to the 1990s. Uh, again, check out our website, isavetractors.com. Parts, hats, stickers, we got it all. My name is Norman. See you next time.